So the biggest problem with paid marketing right now is basically the fact that it's paid. And hold up, I know this sounds like pretty crazy from the get-go. Before I explain exactly what I mean, I want to cover one single point, right? Like Elon Musk, for example, right? Tesla, they spend zero on paid ads which basically means that they don't advertise on Facebook, they don't advertise on LinkedIn. And yes, I said LinkedIn, because companies like uh, Mercedes or BMW might uh, advertise their quote unquote executive cars to actual executives. Uh, they don't advertise on Instagram, none of that, right? And there's actually a chart, which I'll post either here or here, which basically showcases how much other companies spend, I think annually, if I'm not mistaken, on paid ads, and then how much Elon spends with Tesla on paid ads. They basically, like it's, it's zero, right? it's it's more content based it's more content marketing it's more their expos it's more elon musk appearing on podcasts speaking about the product speaking about whatever they're doing etc it's more content based and as somebody who runs the growth hacking bootcamp and is currently setting up another thing so crypto database start up right now in the background and i'm just exploring the possibilities of paid ads i'm just constantly in this personal disagreement with myself about whether it's worth it or not right whether i'm i'm ready to pay four to five us dollars per per click right or whether i'm ready to devote another four to five months on the business create the content marketing plan uh rank a couple of uh, videos right on low competition high volume keywords for the business itself and devote those four to five months to it right and essentially then just sit back and watch the business just drive traffic on its own right and it's an issue right it's an issue from the aspect of just about every single industry out there will reach a point of oversaturation at some point right it, it, you will have enough competition in a certain uh, industry uh, regardless of the entry barriers and as every single industry reaches a point of oversaturation right the 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 margins essentially tighten up so what this means is is if i join an industry right now and i decide to run uh pay-per-click ads so like google ads and i decide to step in with a certain bid right if somebody else steps in right now as well they're going to increase their bid so that their ad shows more frequently than it mine shows which basically means that I'm gonna then have to increase my bid as well, right? Then another competitor is gonna have to come in and increase their bid as well. And then another competitor is gonna have to increase their bid as well until it comes to a point of where it just doesn't make sense to advertise anymore. So what I then need to do is I then need to restructure my pricing, right? And you can only do that so much until it just doesn't make sense for the customer to buy from you anymore. Because if there's another competitor out there that's doing content marketing, right? And they're paying zero on ads, right? But they're essentially just really good with content, right? Sure, they pay editors. Sure, they pay writers and researchers, etc. But I don't think it's going to cost as much as a paid marketing strategy in a very, very competitive industry, right? Where you can have, let's say, ad budgets that are within the five six seven figures like sure why not it all depends on the ROAS that you're getting from it but that's my point and sure growth hacking does come to play into this right because you are talking about low cost highly effective marketing and you're always looking for those blue oceans out there there's a certain point of where some growth hacks work and some don't primarily because of scalability and it's something that i mentioned in my videos over and over again growth hacking is cool and all but getting a scalable growth hack that's where the money is and that's even harder it's it's even harder at the end of the day because you might need development knowledge you might need coding knowledge etc the best thing to revert to right and this is just something that i've been doing over and over again whenever i'm starting anything new and whenever i'm just progressing on something that i've already built in the past is basically content on low competition high volume to medium volume keywords so just long tail keywords spread across uh, written content and then of course spread across uh, video content as well and then algorithm based content so tiktok instagram reels uh, youtube shorts etc and it's just something that i've been testing right now and for instance the boot camp itself is a 100% content marketing based business. So it, it's a business that I started a year and a half ago, right? It's a community as well as a uh, recurring subscription based uh, course. Price pretty low, right? It's priced at 30 bucks per month, but you pay a three months upfront and it's a recurring, right? And it's recurring because the content is always updated. This business is a business that 
I didn't build via ads, right? And as somebody who actually tried to set up ads for them right now, right? Paying four or five dollars per click whilst also competing with my competitors, which I don't want to name right now, it just doesn't feel right to me. Like, per, like especially after I've been able to drive tens of thousands of clicks to the homepage over, I don't know, X number of months, right? Without spending a single dime on ads. And the strategy there was just identifying low competition, high volume keywords on YouTube, right? Like let's say how to scrape uh, Facebook or how to scrape Instagram. And then just stepping into these keywords, creating educational content that guides the viewer from A to Z with regards to how to get it done. Plug in a couple of providers out there. I actually like never partook in any affiliate offer. So I, I never really benefited from anybody signing up or paying for anything. Cause personally speaking, I just can't be bothered to set that up and speak with them and get it done, etc. I think I tried it with Integromat once, but it just never worked out. And doing that, and then six months later, well, right, whilst I'm, whilst I'm focusing on another business and while there, there's there's no continuous cost other than the uh, the tech stack that the, the, the bootcamp is built on, I'm basically able to build something else, right? Whilst the, the, the marketing for that and the marketing assets are just continuing continuously working in the background. So I'm basically, I, I've encapsulated myself in content, right? And I'm just constantly selling the bootcamp in the background as opposed to paid ads, paid ads, which is continuous cost for continuous results, right? As opposed to content marketing, which is basically not necessarily continuous, it's one time, right? But the time investment and the margin for error, not the margin for error, but the space for error, it's bigger because you might spend eight hours on creating a single piece of content or a single piece of video and it, it just might amount to like nothing. People won't find it interesting. There won't be watch time. There won't be retention, etc. So it's a little bit tricky, right? But of course, 100%, if you don't have the resources, if you don't have the budget, if you don't have anything, mass content is the way to go, right? Choose your style. If it's educational, make sure it's educational. If, if it's entertaining, make sure it's entertaining and know which platform you're basically going up against. Cause if you're going up against, again, YouTube, it's very different from TikTok. If you're going up against against uh, Instagram, it's very different from YouTube, right? You're dealing with hashtags on YouTube, you're dealing with SEO and then the trending algorithm as well. And the good thing about YouTube is even if you're not a world-class content creator, which personally speaking, I'm not, uh, it's only recently that I've started focusing on my content to just make sure that it's better, easier to digest, etc. Even if you're not that, you can still take advantage of YouTube's search algorithm because YouTube consists of two algorithms, the actual trending and suggesting one, so the, the one that actually suggests videos on your homepage, etc. That's the biggest one. But then on the flip side, if you suck with content creation, you can also get by uh, just from the SEO standpoint, because if you identify low competition, high volume keywords, it's easy to rank just by following a couple of protocols with regards to the title, the description, and making sure that the video is at least watchable. Like it will be there. So if anybody ever pops onto uh, YouTube and they search for something complicated, which might get, I don't know, like a hundred searches per month worldwide, you're at least ranking for that. And you're driving, uh, you're driving traffic directly in that way. But yeah, regardless, I don't want to rant for too long, but uh, if you're able to get a content marketing strategy that works. And if you're able to get a content marketing strategy that might go viral, like that's it, uh, especially if you build a personal brand, because somebody like, I, I, just to also connect it to the initial point itself, somebody like Elon Musk, it's not even about Tesla anymore, right? If he decides to shut down Tesla tomorrow and he decides to open a, uh, <laughs> and he decides to open a washing machine company, right? He has to spend zero on ads. He already has a community. He already has a following, right? He's just able to create content for it and he can get it rolling from there. And that's exactly what he did with the boring company, if I'm not mistaken, where they just decided out of the blue that they want to sell flamethrowers, right? It's content marketing based, right? Zero on paid ads, content marketing. He went on his Twitter profile. He just did a like two, three posts and they're driving thousands of clicks for free directly onto that, right? If somebody decided to compete with him right now and they decided that they want to they, they want to do ppc right and offer flamethrowers what's their margin going to be it's going to be a minuscule percentage of what elon musk has primarily because of the content and trust me elon does spend for podcast appearances and i'm sure they do spend for press and pr and everything and i'm sure that there was a point where they did have to advertise but if you're able to somehow sidestep this and create a content marketing strategy that works the the amount of stuff that you're able to do is crazy plus last but not least um a video that I did exactly, not even exactly, I think it was 
10, 10 months ago on content marketing explained, which I'll attach either here or there. Uh, I covered a very particular segment of a company of a company that had a content marketing strategy for blenders, and it was basically a show that like will it blend. And in this show, what they basically did was they had a blender, and they're a blender company. They sell blenders. Um, they just stuff stuff like. Put stuff in the blender see if it blends right very very simple like uh today we'll do a a coffee mug will it blend see if it blends that's it and it's stuff that's interesting next day marbles uh next day that see if firecrackers blend etc so this is a content marketing strategy that you're you're watching it because you're bored but if you ever decide that it's time to get a blender the first company that you will ever think of is a blend tech basically the company that had the content marketing strategy itself and they have to spend zero on ads that's it they just need to basically cover the costs of the blenders that they're destroying the production costs of the video which is pretty simple you just get a camera like one that's right here uh add a blender and just start throwing stuff in it and seeing if it blends like what's the cost here it's certainly cheaper than a six-figure marketing ad spend uh on uh let's say the 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 keyword of uh, buy a blender and then location or whatever now of course paid ads also serve their purpose at some point right you can actually use paid ads to boost your content marketing or to to, to build a community Community super quick so like a, basically what I like to call is like a, a layer two offer so instead of going directly for the sale go for a more soft sale saying join our community or register with your email but then again right the initial point is the click right so there's only so soft that you can go before the the campaign itself just becomes totally irrelevant uh, you're still paying three dollars per click right even if you're just asking for an email so that that also comes into play but uh, yeah uh, I'd hate to rant any further, but those are just some thoughts.